What is going on everybody and welcome back to some more Gary's Mod Game Mode Scripting. In today's part we are going to be continuing with our money printers and we are going to actually be making it so we are displaying actual values instead of just the placeholder stuff that we currently have. So let's go ahead and get all three of our files open today because we will be needing all three of them and we will be changing all three of them. So go ahead and do that and let's go ahead and start with our shared.lua file. So for this, the first thing we want to do is we want to remove this ent.buyer variable because we don't need that anymore with what we're about to do. So let's go ahead and just get rid of that. And instead of that, we want to create ourselves something just right at the top of our shared.lua file. And this will be function ent colon setup data tables. And then end that off. Now in here we are going to be creating some networked variables that will be accessible from within our other files and we'll be using those in order to display certain information. In this case we'll be using it to display the buyer or the owner of the entity as well as the amount of money currently stored within our entity or in this case our money printer. So for this we want to do self colon. This will go ahead and grab whatever entity we are currently working with. Then we want to create a network var variable and we want to create ourselves a string variable and the index for this will be zero and the name of this is going to be called buyer this right here is how we're going to be accessing it or whenever we go about calling it we can use get buyer or set buyer and this value right here the slot is every single time you create a, another string network variable, you want to go ahead and increment that value by one. So if I go ahead and create another string network variable here, I want to set this to, or set the next one to one. So after that, we want to create ourselves another network variable that will be for the storage, self colon network var, and this will be an int. And again, since this, since this is our first time using an integer for a network variable, we're just going to set the slot to zero. And the name of it will be storage. And once we have those network variables done, we are done with the with this function for now. And we want to go ahead, go down to this section here, or pretty much anywhere in this section. We want to go ahead and create two more variables here. We want an ent.printrate. And that'll do what the name says. It's just, in this case, the amount of seconds that it will take for the money to print. Then the ent dot print amount will be how much it prints every second in this case. And let's go ahead and do 20. So go ahead and save that. Once you got that done, we are all done with our share.lua file today. So let's move on to our cl underscore init file. And all we want to do in here is just change out a couple of variables here. In this case, the printer owner and the entity or the money amount. So currently we have these placeholders here. So now that we have those network variables that we created right here, we can go ahead and just easily grab these by doing self colon. Again, this will grab whatever entity we are currently working with colon get buyer. And this will go ahead and grab whatever is currently stored in this buyer network variable. And then the money amount, we want self colon get storage like that. And again, that'll go ahead and grab whatever is currently stored within our storage network variable. And that right there is all we need in the client side init file. So let's go on, move on to our final file here and add some code. So first thing we want to do is we want to create ourselves a timer. And this timer will just be used in order to pay out or set the value of the money amount, or in this case, the network variable called storage. So right below this, let's create ourselves a nice little timer here. For this, we're going to be using timer.create. And the first argument it takes is the name of the timer. I'm just going to call it print timer. The second argument is the time in seconds that we want it to be call whatever is within it. And this will be self.printrate using that handy dandy print rate variable we have stored here, followed by the number of repetitions or how often we want it to do it. In this case, we want it to run indefinitely, so we're just going to set this to zero. Then of that, we want a function 
that will be called every single time that this timer runs, or in this case, be called every single second. And then end it off, just like any other function. And what we want to happen here every single second is to go ahead, get the storage variable. We want to set it, so self colon set storage. This will just go ahead and set the value of this network variable that we created here. And we want to set this to self colon get storage plus the print amount that we have stored in the share.lua file here, in this case 20. Now once we got that timer done, let's go ahead and create ourselves a spawn function here so we can set some variables and properly spawn this thing. So let's just put it right below the initialize function here and call it function ent colon spawn function like so. Just like we did last time, and honestly you can probably just copy and paste this. I'm just going to go through it one more time. And this right here takes in three arguments, a player, a trace result, and then the class name of the entity. Oops. Now we want to check to see if this trace result is not hitting anything. Then we just want to go ahead and return and no longer go through the spawn function here. Otherwise, let's create ourselves a spawn position for it by getting the shoot position of the player, adding the forward facing vector, and then just multiplying that by 80. This right, this code right here is extremely wonky, so there's there's probably a better way of doing it, but it's not too big of a deal, so I'm not going to worry too much about it because it kind of does what we want. But anyways, we want to create a variable here, local ent is equal to ent.create the class name. And with an entity, we want to set some network variables here. So ent colon set buyer to whatever the name of the player is. So poi colon get name. Then the storage for this. So ent colon set storage to zero. And then just the position of it using the spawn position that we just created above. Spawn it. Activate it and return the ent or the entity. Now after that we want to navigate to our ent use function right here and we currently have it set to just give us 10 every time we use it. We no longer want that, that was just to test it. So let's change this 10 to our brand new storage network variable here. And after we, after the player uses it, we want to set the storage back to zero like so. And lastly, we want to navigate to our on take damage function here. And whenever the entity is destroyed or whenever the health is less than or equal to zero, we just want to do some cleanup here and remove our timer. And the timer we want to remove is the print timer. And also one last thing that we want to do here that I kind of forgot is with this timer, if we set it to print timer, every single entity that spawns is going to have the same exact time with it. And that's obviously not, not what we want. So what we want to do to make this a little bit a little bit more unique per entity, we want to go ahead and concatenate onto that self colon ent index. And let's copy this and remove that timer that is associated with this entity. That should go ahead and clear up any issues with that and once that is all done, if we save it, head into game here, we should be able to spawn this and it should be printing the money and we should be able to grab it and then everything should work smoothly. So once the game launches up, I will be right back and we will test this. Okay, now that the game is launched, let's go ahead and spawn in our printer from the Q menu or if you did add it to the F4 menu, spawn it from the F4 menu. So entities, basic printer, uh, what do we got? Oh. Okay. Okay, this is because here. That should be set set up data tables, not set up data table. My bad. Now if we go ahead and test this, let's just reload it just in case here. So now if we spawn it from within the queue menu, what we should get is it should spawn. You can see that on the top we have the owner of it, followed by the amount of money currently stored in it. And every single second it will go up by however much the print amount is. Now when we go about clicking on this, if we look at my money, Currently 5,754, we click on it, it goes up by however much was stored in there, and sets the value back to zero. 
So everything is working properly here. That is going to conclude this episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.